Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing new concept from right here in the solar system that's now referred to as a dark comet. Something that actually started with the mystery that you see right here, the famous Oumuamua. But something that now, a few years later, has become a new scientific field and seems to be actually an intriguing new type of an object we never knew existed. And so let's talk about some of the recent studies about this and discuss what all of this means and why it's actually kind of important for the protection of planet Earth. But here just a brief reminder. So back in 2017, completely by accident, researchers discovered the first ever interstellar object, Oumuamua. And though technically we're not even sure what it really looks like, because at first it was believed to be some kind of a cigar-like object, but later on it was assumed to be some kind of a pancake, what we're absolutely certain about is that during its transition in the solar system, for some reason it actually started to display very tiny signs of acceleration. Which is of course why it became an overnight sensation, because certain scientists started to claim that yeah, this is a sign of some kind of an extraterrestrial intelligence and potentially signs of some kind of an ancient probe from a species far, far away. But you might want to check out some of the previous videos in the description to find out why... Um, I'm sorry, but that's really bollocks. It's really not. It's not aliens. It is just a rock. But a very special rock, as we've discovered pretty quickly. Because several additional observations and investigations did actually discover that it was doing something very bizarre. It was basically exhibiting cometary features without the actual cometary tail. Or in other words, it was behaving like a typical comet, accelerating and decelerating as a result of some kind of an emission, but no matter how hard we tried, nobody could find these emissions. Or at least nobody could find them at first. Once again, some of the videos in the description talk about this a little bit more. And so this very bizarre change in trajectory began something really exciting. It gave some scientists an idea to possibly look for something very similar right here in the solar system. In other words, do we actually have similar objects that potentially display similar acceleration without any emissions? In this case, a lot of scientific studies essentially revealed that this type of an acceleration would indeed be possible if certain volatile gases were being released by this object, because this type of an outgassing can definitely explain everything we're observing. But here the new question was, what exactly was escaping and what's outgassing, since we can't seem to see it? And intriguingly, there was an earlier study from practically a year before that, from March of 2016, that actually did discover something bizarrely similar. Not similar in the sense that it came from the interstellar space, but in the sense that it was also exhibiting acceleration without visible outgassing. This was originally discussed in this study, but basically as a kind of a hypothetical proposition. And in this case, they actually discovered 42 separate asteroids whose acceleration was believed to be at least three times stronger than what should be possible from the effect known as Yarkovsky effect, which is a pretty well-known phenomenon that happens on every single asteroid as a result of solar radiation. Basically, as the asteroid spins, it heats up on one side, with that heated side then basically acting like a tiny rocket engine, which in every single case gives asteroids a very, very tiny propulsion. And in some cases, it also makes them spin a little bit faster. But this is a very minute effect and seems to be incomparable to cometary effects. And so that study from 2016 discovered a bunch of asteroids that were essentially doing something entirely different. With one asteroid in particular, 2003 RM, basically becoming a target of many different studies. And intriguingly, the actual effects from this asteroid were extremely similar to what were observed during the passage of Oumuamua. The overall acceleration and deceleration was surprisingly identical. And once again, unexplainable by any known effect. And so the question here was, okay, so what's happening? Is this actually an asteroid or is this a comet? And if so, what kind of a comet can this be? And that's because technically comets and asteroids are distinct objects. For example, a typical asteroid, supposed to contain a lot of rocky materials and can withstand solar radiation much longer, thus being able to survive much closer to the Sun, even in the inner regions, very close to Venus and obviously planet Earth. Whereas for a typical comet, we expect them to come from the outer solar system, but also contain a lot of icy molecules, frozen for billions of years and then suddenly evaporated once these comets come close to the Sun as a result of some kind of a gravitational disturbance, most likely by giant planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus, or maybe by something else entirely from billions of years ago. 
For example, technically, a passage of a star close to the solar system tens of millions of years ago would disturb enough comets on the outskirts, sending them toward the inner solar system, making some of them come close to the sun millions of years later. And as soon as they come close to the sun, they produce their iconic tail and sometimes fall apart when they get really close to the sun as a result of internal rupture. But in the last few decades, researchers also discovered something in between or some objects that seem to meet none of these criteria. We actually discussed one of the more unusual objects in one of the recent videos, that was the discussion about the so-called space volcano, but today we're going to discuss this new category that seems to exist as well. And well, it's now referred to as dark comets. Basically, a kind of a new space rock that seems to also exhibit cometary features without the visible tail. Or essentially a kind of a hybrid, a comet asteroid. And it looks like Oumuamua was definitely one of these objects. And while in the last few months there have been some major updates about these objects, mostly coming from two papers we're going to be discussing today. The paper by Seligman and his team on two distinct populations of dark comets and Aster Taylor and his team on the potential origins of these comets and basically how they possibly evolve. And the thing is, these studies are now super important. And that's actually for one really, really important reason. It's now been suggested that many of these objects seem to actually pose a much larger threat to planet Earth than we ever thought possible. Mostly because, unlike other asteroids that only rely on the Yarkovsky effect, since these objects become comets and can actually accelerate unpredictably, these small, rapidly spinning objects can and very likely do come close to planet Earth, possibly even colliding with the planet once in a while, with a lot of recent studies even suggesting that these comets potentially served as a delivery system for a lot of different elements, including actually water. And that's the intriguing part. It's now been suggested that one of the things that evaporates from the surface, and that's of course difficult to see, is maybe water particles. In other words, one of the outgassing materials that seems to be able to cause non-gravitational acceleration is maybe water molecules. But as of today, no signs of water have been seen from these objects, and so even now this is just a hypothesis. Nevertheless, dark comets are now a really strong candidate for how water was maybe delivered to planet Earth early on. And according to these two recent studies, first of all, they seem to fall into two distinct populations. Larger ones, mostly residing in the outer solar system close to Jupiter, and smaller ones in the inner solar system, usually in the asteroid belt. And so here, by studying the reflectivity of these objects and by studying their orbits, researchers behind this recent study were able to categorize them into two separate kinds. The outer dark comets, which seem to be kind of similar to Jupiter family comets, seem to have very eccentric orbits and seem to be relatively large, at least a few hundred meters across and sometimes even a few kilometers. These are obviously much more dangerous, but they also seem to be much more far away, unlikely to come close to planet Earth anytime soon. Whereas the second group is much closer, mostly located in the inner solar system, but likely for us usually have nearly circular orbits and are only tens of meters across. An asteroid of this size would definitely cause some damage, but would not be tremendously destructive. Here, the airburst would be kind of similar to what happened during the Chelyabinsk event in 2013. And these smaller, closer dark comets seem to mostly come from the asteroid belt, with their orbit potentially disrupted by Jupiter or Saturn. And it is quite possible that the larger dark comets created the smaller dark comets. Or basically, the collision of dark comets on the outskirts of the solar system possibly created a bunch of fragments that then traveled to the asteroid belt. Or maybe they're not related at all. I mean, right now we barely know anything about them, so everything is essentially a hypothesis. But we are finding more and more of these objects, and in just the last year, seven more have officially been confirmed. But that's still not a large number. In total, we actually know of just 15 such objects, or at least the ones that have been confirmed through various studies. And I guess what's intriguing about all of these objects so far is that, compared to even other asteroids, they seem to be really strong. A lot of them do spin really fast, which suggests that they do have enough internal strength to not fall apart. Which does suggest a slightly different composition from other asteroids, and naturally the composition and of course the origin that we cannot explain yet. But once we can figure out their origin, things will make a lot more sense. For example, right now this is the only explanation we have. Maybe they all started as Jupiter family comets that eventually shrunk in size 
reaching the point where only invisible volatiles were now being produced. And in this case, researchers believe that it could be all the result of how fast the initial object is spinning. And so if it spins really fast and starts spinning more and more, this might cause a disintegration and the loss of volatiles, which eventually produces smaller, less active objects, some of them becoming these dark comets. And so based on the study and based on some of the previous observations, researchers here provide at least several examples, essentially showing us this evolutionary process. But here this doesn't answer a lot of important questions. For example, what's evaporating? What causes this anomalous acceleration? And what causes invisible outgassing? Since so far nothing specific has been observed, we're not going to know much more about their evolution or their origin, because we just don't know what's inside of them. Which of course means maybe two things. One is that we have to try to find a way to study this with telescopes like the James Webb, in order to actually observe what molecules are produced here, although in this case this would be challenging since these are really small objects and also seem to move pretty fast across the night skies. And so basically here tracking an asteroid in the asteroid belt might actually be a little bit challenging for the James Webb. But second of all, or I guess the second option here, is to maybe have some kind of a retrieval mission. Basically something similar to what happened with the asteroid Ryugu and Bennu, but in this case really focusing on these very bizarre dark comets, in order to find out what's on them, and thus by extension answering the question about Oumuamua. And so until those observations and until those future missions, we're unfortunately not going to know much more, but I'm still going to keep my eyes open for new studies and possibly new discoveries, because this is a really fascinating topic, a completely new type of an object in a solar system that we didn't know existed until relatively recently. And so once there are some updates, we'll come back and discuss this more. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.